Um, okay, so this is a general question. Um, academics tend to argue that uh, anger or heated exchanges in negotiation are, are not good because, or because they cloud our rationality and we tend to not be able to identify mutually beneficial solutions. But I wonder if you could, um, drawing on your experiences in the private sector and in the public sector, maybe share with us uh, a couple of examples where you think that maybe the use of anger or heated exchanges may have actually enhanced your ability to achieve your negotiating aims. Is that true? None of you like anger in, in <laughs> negotiations? I, I've been told the exact opposite, that the most angry things in the world are faculty meetings at Harvard. <laughs> Um, teach what you can't do. <laughs> well, um, there's a difference between uncontrolled anger and anger as a tactic, and I need to make that right up front. If you're really out of control angry, that's not good. But if you show, and, but the way you convey the relative importance of issues is by your tone of voice, by your body language, and by the timing of when you say this is this is absolute crap and don't give us this anymore. Now I've had some of the people I've worked with over the years, very good negotiators, have all, particularly negotiators who were lawyers by background, have tended to always hang in there and always whittle away. And as lawyers are more likely to stick it out and be very calm and methodical and unemotional. Uh, I, I was on Wall Street for uh, a number of years uh, after I left the State Department in 1981. I was a managing director at um, Lehman Brothers and the vice chairman at, uh, between the Dayton Agreement and the UN at uh, vice chairman at CS First Boston. And I learned a lot from those guys. They really get angry. I mean, this is a business school crowd in here, partially. Anyway, uh, I've, I've seen some of my colleagues, good Harvard MBAs, go crazy in business meetings. I've never seen a lawyer go crazy. <laughs> Sometimes the anger is a really stupid thing to do because they lose control and you look unreliable. Other times it makes the point. Uh, I've been quite willing to use anger as a tactic, but I hope that I don't lose I really don't go over the top. I did, there's only one point in the Dayton negotiations where I really got genuinely angry, and I describe that in the book. Uh, the, um, the rest of the anger was, was tactical. In the UN negotiations, first of all, you should never get angry with members of Congress. <laughs> that is a very bad idea. They pay the bills, they sign the checks, and you, you do not win when you're rude to Congress as people like Paul Wolfowitz have seen time and time again. The route to Congress is a terrible idea. Um, but when you are dealing with, let's say, the Cubans, we mentioned the Cubans earlier, and it's two in the morning, and the Cuban is holding you up on some non-germane issue because he wants something completely unrelated, which is clearly polemical, and he's clearly under instructions from Havana to go for this, and he's just following his instructions. There's no point sitting around trying to, trying to cut a deal with the guy. You have to tell him, and you have to tell him very clearly and very br 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 brutally that he's never going to get what he's asking for, but he, we, the United States, will make goddamn sure that the whole United Nations system knows that Havana has prevented a deal to save the UN and give a billion dollars to them. That's the only way to deal with them. You know he's going to he has a note taker next to him. You know he's going to report it back, and you want the the, the uh, negotiating the the message to Havana to say that uh, that uh, the Americans saying this was pretty annoyed. Ambassador Holbrook, comma with flared nostrils. <laughs> And then Bob always calms me down, which is part of our act. Yeah. <laughs> um, you just have to be, I mean, I really admire the people who have iron self-control. One of my bosses was Cyrus Vance. He was a wonderful man and a great negotiator. I learned a lot from him. He was also a very good lawyer. And every once in a while, even those of us who admired and loved him thought, gosh, if he would just show anger right now, 
annoyance, it would help the negotiation. But it was not in his makeup to do it. I respect it. It's, it's organic to his personality and his profession. But, um, oh, by the way, another thing, you mentioned anger. There's another very important component of a good negotiation, and it's one Roger has written about, and that's humor. There's a, there are times when you can, uh, where you can defuse a situation, particularly if the other side is making some truly ridiculous point of view, um, just by turning it into a joke and just trying to...